Hey guys, in today's video, we're going to take a look at a big old battery from Power Queen. This is a 240 amp hour, 3072 watt hour lithium iron phosphate battery in a metal case. Is it worth a look? Let's find out. All right, so this is a 12.8 volt lithium ion phosphate battery. And as I mentioned, it's a, it's a beast, 240 amp hours. And uh, I'm gonna skip the unboxing because, you know, hey, it's a battery, this is what you get. Uh, there aren't really any cables in the box. There's no extra terminal studs. Uh, you do get a nice little user guide packet here with a little quick start guide for beginners and then kind of a standard user manual here. And the manual is pretty decent. It does have uh, a lot of explanation about the tech specs, which we're gonna get into, and kind of the usual various configurations that are available with that manual. But let's just jump into the specs on this. First of all, let's talk about the cost. So the cost on this battery is $680. And uh, while that is definitely a lot of money, it is uh, 240 amp hours. And if you compare that to something like this, this is a 100 amp hour battery. So this is 2.4 times bigger than this. And this runs around $300. And uh, if you do the math on a cost per watt hour, this comes out just a little bit ahead as in terms of being cheaper in terms of cost per watt hour. And once we get into the testing results, you'll see that the cost per watt hour on this thing, uh, that story is actually more interesting than simply the calculation based on the rated 3072 watt hours. So, uh, but this gives you kind of a good uh, comparison if I were to put these things side by side. Again, keep in mind that this is two, almost two and a half times bigger, not quite, in terms of capacity. So it's obviously much heavier. This thing weighs about 80 pounds. This thing weighs about, I think, 25 pounds or so. And you kind of see how big it is from this angle. Big difference, right? But again, it's big, almost two and a half of these. So we put this one aside. But getting into the actual dimensions or the specific dimensions, in this direction here, we are looking at 18.9 inches long. It is uh, eight and a half inches tall. And width-wise, it is 11.6 inches in this direction right here. So hopefully that gives you a good sense of uh, how much space it takes up. Now, as I mentioned, it is a lithium iron phosphate battery chemistry, uh, which means that it is rated to maintain at least 80% of its original capacity after 4,000 full charge and discharge cycles. Or if you happen to be using this at an 80% depth of discharge, you could expect about 6,000 cycles at 80% to still retain 80% of its original full capacity if that makes sense. Now real quick, let's just kind of run through some specs on this thing before we get into some of the testing results. And I will tell you, you want to stay tuned for the capacity test results because they are kind of eye popping. So this thing does have a uh, 150 amp BMS and that compares to something like in that 100 amp hour battery that I saw that I showed you a second ago, that's a 100 amp uh, BMS. So 50% bigger in terms of the BMS capacity. Now the maximum rated continuous power output on this battery is 1,920 watts versus on something like that uh, 100 amp hour version, it's rated at I think 1280, so 1,280 watts. Now one thing that really makes this battery great for a battery bank setup is it's got these front side terminals right here and they are doubled up. So that really makes it a lot easier to do wiring on, on multiple stacked battery banks for parallel and series or series parallel. And it also does something else for heat dissipation, as does the metal case. I'll talk more about that in a little bit. But the BMS on this battery will support up to a 4S, 4P configuration, which gives you about 49 kilowatt hours of battery capacity when it's fully maxed out. So for most people, 49 kilowatt hours of battery capacity is enough to do a full replacement of grid power. All right, let's jump right into the testing and find out what the usable capacity of this battery actually is. All right, let's do a DC discharge test on this Power Queen battery. So we're looking for something around 3,072 watt hours. Now I did fully charge this battery several weeks ago and it's been sitting idle since that time. So I'm probably gonna run this test a couple of times after I uh, discharge it and fully recharge it just to kind of get a feel for where the numbers actually land. Let's see what we end up with. So we'll let that run and we'll come back and see what kind of capacity numbers we got. All right, this thing just stopped discharging. So let's see what we ended up with. And as you can see, we got 3,000 
259 watt hours. That's pretty incredible, especially for a battery that's rated for 3072 watt hours. So this has got to be one of the best performing capacity tests that I have seen. All right, so as you can see, we got actually significantly more than its rated capacity of 3,072, almost hitting 3,260 watt hours. That's like 106% more than rated capacity. So I ran the test again and wait, it actually gets better if you can believe that or not. On the second test, as you can see that I ran here, we actually got 3,320 watt hours, and that is almost 108% of rated capacity. So this particular battery from Power Queen has far and away the highest actual capacity to rated capacity uh, performance that I have seen in a battery that I've tested to date. All right, so aside from the usable capacity, I also would like to do load testing on these just to make sure that they will maintain their rated continuous output. So let's go check and see how that went. Now that does have a, a 150 amp BMS, which means it is rated to continuously discharge or charge at 150 amps. I've got a couple of oil heaters here on the floor connected to my 2000 watt inverter. Um, you should be able to get, I think the manual says 350 amps for about five seconds. Now my inverter is not gonna let me do that, uh, but I'm gonna see how far we can push it, see if we can at least get 150 amps continuous, maybe a little bit more than that, and then just see how far we can push it before the inverter cuts off, which is probably gonna happen before the battery cuts off. Now you can see my new setup, if you've seen this setup before, you can see it looks a little bit different. So this is my 12 volt inverter, it's uh, capped at 2000 watts. And I have added a, uh, a different fuse here. Now, just for, for kicks, um, I did, did the original sort of DIY setup using this little 200 amp breaker. And uh, I did have somebody comment that said, these, uh, these breakers are garbage. This did actually fail and uh, it doesn't actually work anymore. So I thought it'd make more sense to get uh, an actual fuse in there but I also don't like that spark you get as the capacitors energize when you complete the circuit on the battery connection. So I did add a little battery disconnect, which is always a good, good idea to have anyway. So this is like a little $15 battery disconnect switch, and I'll, I'll put that in the description below if you wanna, if you wanna be able to go to see what that is. Uh, but now I have uh, also added a couple of bus bars. Um, so that allows me to land my cables a little more neatly here without having to try to stack everything here on the inverter terminals, which is not a great idea, uh, but it will do in a pinch on a small setup. Anyway, uh, the rest of it we're not going to bother with today. It's the solar input, not really uh, directly ap applicable to what we're doing here. So let's do the load test and see how, how we do. I'm going to capture the performance on my Victron Smart Shunt that I've got down here connected. All right, so let me go ahead and kick on the AC inverter. And you can see everything is running fine there. And you can see on screen, uh, we are. I must have forgotten to turn off one of these, uh, one of these oil oil heaters, because we're already pulling over 1,300 watts and over 100 amps. So let me figure out what's running, and then let's see if we can add to that and get us up into that 150 amp territory. All right, so I've got one of these oil heaters all the way on, and the other one is sort of half on, and we are pulling 148.8 amps and a little over 1,800 watts. Let me go ahead and. Um, and switch it to the next level up on the one that's not already on high. And let's see here, we are at 169 amps. So we are running in excess of the 150 amp continuous rating here. Let me go ahead and take the other heater all the way up so that both are at max and just see what happens. Immediately I tripped the, uh, the AC inverter. Let's turn that off. Yeah, so anyway, definitely can get 150 amps continuous uh, out of this 240 amp hour battery with 150 amp BMS. So unfortunately with this particular 2000 watt AC inverter, I don't have the ability to push this into the 350 amps for five seconds test. I'd kind of like to know for sure, but I don't have a way to test that because my AC inverter will cut me off. And my 3000 watt inverter is a 24 volt uh, inverter. And so I would need a couple of these uh, in uh, series in order to set up in a 24 volt configuration. So that test is out, but as far as I can tell, 150 amps continuous, absolutely no problem on this battery from Power Queen. All right, while we're at it, let's just take a look at the front of this thing, because it's this thing is really designed to kind of be in a, a large bank. You can't really stack a one of these units on top of another one. You kind of have to put it on a shelf, and each, each shelf would have its own single row of batteries because of these 
big spring-loaded metal handles on the top, uh, which are really handy when you're moving this thing around, by the way. But I do like the fact that they've got these double terminals here on the front, and they are recessed, so you're not likely to accidentally hit them, even if these little plastic covers aren't on. Uh, but anyway, that does make it a lot easier for uh, parallel series or series parallel wiring options. Um, definitely a, a nice design feature. I also do like this metal case because it does uh, do a little bit better job at heat dissipation than those ABS plastic cases. And uh, also the same goes with this double terminal design. Um, you get less buildup of heat on a single terminal and it's able to sort of load balance that heat across multiple terminals and dissipate it more quickly. All right, so clearly we're able to get that 150 amp rated continuous output. Actually, we got a little bit better than that. And, uh, and then the AC inverter did eventually shut me down. But let's talk real quick about what kinds of appliances and things around the house uh, could you actually run on one full charge from just one of these 3000 plus watt hour batteries. So first of all, something like a 5000 BTU small room air conditioner, uh, those typically pull about 500 watts and you could easily expect to get at least six hours of runtime off a full charge from one of these. You'd probably actually get more than that typically uh, but six hours if the compressor is running continuously. And for a full-size refrigerator, in my case, I have a full-size Samsung that's about 12 years old, and I could expect to get somewhere in the, in the neighborhood of about 30 hours of runtime uh, from a full charge on this battery. All right, let's talk about gas furnaces. I've actually run my gas furnace off this battery using my manual transfer switch, and I was able to get upwards of 20 hours or so of runtime out of that. Now that's obviously gonna be very variable depending on the ambient temperature outside, how well insulated your house is, how efficient your furnace is, and what your set point temperature is. But in my case, I was able to get about 20 hours of runtime with an ambient outside temperature of somewhere around upper 40s or maybe lower 50s Fahrenheit. And by the way, if you're keeping score on this type of thing, uh, something in that 3000 plus watt hour range is able to be fully recharged in a typical single day of decent sun conditions with an 800 watt solar array. And just for kicks, I also ran my internet router, my desktop computer, and my super ultra wide Samsung monitor on that computer for just about 20 hours on a single charge. All right, let's, let's run through a sort of a scenario so we can compare kind of why you might consider something like this over multiple of these. So just for comparison's sake, you know, this, as I said, is a 240 watt hour. This is a 100 watt hour. So even if we say two of these batteries they're gonna cost you right around $600, plus or minus a couple bucks. This one's gonna cost you 680, but you're still getting 20% more watt hour capacity, or as you saw, actually a fair bit more than that, than you would out of a couple of these 100 amp hour batteries. So as I mentioned earlier, from a cost per watt hour standpoint, you do better with this larger battery. Now, another reason why you might wanna consider this is because even if you are just using a single one of these and uh, comparing it to two of these, in order to use, say, a 12-volt system, putting two of these in parallel means you already are going to have more cabling to deal with. And I'll put a little diagram up here to kind of show you what that looks like. So two of these batteries in parallel versus just one of these batteries. So in that case, on this battery, you just got your positive negative lead going out to your, your load, and that's it. And you can see on this one, there's a fair amount more to that, even with just a two battery system in parallel. And on top of that, anytime you're talking about multiple batteries in an array, you have to monitor whether or not they're staying in balance or not. And at least every six months or so, you're gonna to have to rebalance those batteries to keep everything uh, in tip top shape. Now, in just a single battery configuration like this one, if you have a very you know small system, you don't have to worry about balancing at all. It's all handled internally by the BMS. But now let's say you were going to bump up from a 12 volt system to a 24 volt system. That means you have to wire this two of these in series. And that means you would have to get similar capacity. You would put four of these in a two series, two parallel configuration, and I'll put a, another chart on that. And you can see a dramatic difference in the amount of cabling involved in that. So again, just to jump from a 12 volt system to a 24 volt system between these two solutions, this one is gonna be a lot less cabling involved and a lot less balancing to have to worry about. And then just from an expandability standpoint, uh, both of these are able to take 16 units in a 4S, 4P configuration, but that's going to top you out on this particular battery at about 20, a little over 20 kilowatts, 20.48 kilowatts of total capacity. Whereas this, as I mentioned, will give you a total maximum capacity of up to 49 kilowatts. So significantly 
more battery capacity. So this one is much more suitable for a full-on off-grid solution than this one is. All right, so you've seen some of the test clips. There's not a whole lot more to do on batteries, so I don't wanna waste your time. But let me give you a few final thoughts. So I do really like the advantages of having fewer of these large capacity batteries versus more of these smaller capacity ba batteries. It's just less cabling, there's less balancing to worry about. It's a lower cost per watt hour. Uh, the overall space taken up is a little less, not a lot less, but a little bit less for the same capacity. And then just in terms of expandability, much more expandable into a much larger array using something like this. And then I would also point out that that, that usable capacity performance was really outstanding on this battery coming in at you know 8% higher than its actual rated capacity. That's just, I have not seen that yet in any of the other batteries that I've tested. So that's outstanding. And if I haven't mentioned it yet, Power Queen does have a five year warranty on this battery. And uh, I think it's really a good way to go if you're looking for a larger capacity solution. Definitely worth a look. Now, if you have any interest in looking into this battery a little bit further, I will have links in the description below as usual. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna have a discount code for that yet. There might be, but again, uh, that'll be in the description below if you wanna go check that out. So anyway, hopefully you found some of this information useful. If you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up on the video. I would really appreciate it. Got lots of power stations in the queue. I know I see that at the end of each of these videos, but it's true. Uh, there are probably four or five of them just out of shot here that I'm currently working on. So some pretty cool stuff in that pipeline you're going to be wanting to check out uh, when those videos come out. So I do hope to see you in the next one. And until then, have fun out there.